My name is Matt Tellier. I'm the Motion Control Products Manager at AMCI. Our presentation will be about absolute position feedback specific to rotary applications. Today's presentation will cover a typical industrial system and the role that position feedback plays within that system. We're going to look at some common sensor types for position applications. And then we're going to introduce the difference between and discuss the differences between incremental versus absolute position feedback. We're going to talk about single turn feedback, multi turn feedback, as well as the methods of maintaining position for a multi turn feedback sensor. And now that we know a little bit about sensors, how do we get that information to our controller specific to PLCs? And then we're going to round out today's discussion with an introduction for some general applications that use position feedback, as well as provide additional resources to get more information about position feedback sensors and encoders. When we look at a modern control system, with all of its complexities, it is in essence a simple feedback control system. The controller receives an input, let's say a push button, which executes an operation, starts a motor, that produces an output that rotates a shaft. A feedback loop feeds information back to the controller to verify the operation and make corrections as necessary. That feedback can be, but is not limited to, limit switches, temperature sensors, or in our case, position feedback. That position feedback can be used to speed up, slow down the motor, start that motor, or stop that motor. There are multiple ways to get position feedback, but the most common types were our rotary sensors, encoders, which many of us are familiar with, resolvers, or even potentiometers. For linear applications, we often see magneto-restrictive sensors or LVDTs being used. And for non-contact applications, lasers are often used to provide position feedback in linear applications. Our focus today will be on rotary applications. For rotary sensors and position feedback in general, there's two types of outputs. There's incremental and absolute. Incremental sensors produce electrical pulses or counts with linear or rotary motion. Think of a square wave. The signals start over at power up or after a power failure. An incremental encoder does not retain position after a power cycle, nor can it report back that the position has changed while that power was off. It measures relative change of position and does not report actual position. Incremental encoders are typically used for speed measurement or applications that do not require absolute position. Absolute position feedback, on the other hand, provides a unique value for every shaft or linear position. Absolute encoders retain their position after a power cycle, even if there is movement. Absolute encoder signals come in many forms, but those we typically see today are SSI, synchronous serial interface, analog, or the up and coming network interfaces such as Ethernet IP, EtherCAT, or Profinet. Absolute encoders are used in applications where position information is necessary. Another way to think about it is to think about the difference between a stopwatch and a clock. With a stopwatch, all it can tell me is how much time has traveled once I started the watch. It can't tell me when I started, or when, when I stopped. Whereas for absolute, we have a minute hand that tells me when I started and what time I stopped. Pretty simple. Absolute rotary sensors can be either single turn or multi turn. A single turn application. measures the absolute position over 360 degrees, or one revolution. 
After that one revolution, the position resets or starts over. Think of it as a watch with only a minute hand. It cannot tell me how many hours has passed. All it can tell me is an hour has passed. When are they used and why are they used? Well, they're used to generate a signal that represents the encoder shaft's actual position. They can be used to monitor rotational speed. They're typically used for measuring angular position. And with absolute position feedback sensors, the angular resolution is determined by the sensor. It can be a zero to 360 degree sensor, or it can provide as up to 16 bits of absolute position feedback, depending upon the sensor. For multi-turn rotary feedback, we measure the absolute position over multiple 360 degree rotations. It reports both angular position and the number of turns that have occurred since the shaft started rotating. Similar to a watch with both a minute hand and an hour hand. These are used to measure the change in position over multiple rotations. They can often be used to eliminate the need for extra sensors such as home switches or limit switches to prevent over travel. They provide precise positioning of a linear axis such as a lead screw or gantry, or can provide improved control. Think of a rotating drum or a cable reel. For multi-turn sensors, there are many ways to maintain the multiple rotation feedback and methods of turns counting. The most common are the mechanical method or using a battery. With a mechanical method, we use gears to reduce the number of turns the internal sensor makes relative to the external shaft. We can also use two sensors. When we use two sensors, a secondary sensor is used to keep track of the number of turns, while the first sensor keeps track of where I am within that one turn. A more common method that's growing in popularity is the use of a battery. The battery maintains power to the sensor's electronics to monitor any change of position and can keep track of multiple rotations while there's no power to the sensor. There are other methods that exist, but the two above are the most common. Now that we have our sensors, how do I get that information into my controller? In this case, we're going to assume that that controller is a PLC because of the most form most common form of control in industrial automation. The first method is to use a plug-in interface. The advantage of using a plug-in interface is it allows you to expand the number of encoders you can connect to a PLC. Oftentimes your PLC has limited number of uh, I.O. and that I.O. is not specialized. If you have a sensor such as a resolver or an SSI encoder, you need to add a plug-in module to get those sensors into the PLC, which allows you to expand the compatibility and the different types of sensors you can use with that controller. The main disadvantage of going this route is that you need to purchase a separate interface for each type of sensor. There's also a direct interface. A direct interface takes advantage of the inputs or the interfaces available to you directly on the PLC such as analog inputs that are built into the PLC or a networked interface. The advantages with these is you don't need to buy a separate interface. The disadvantage is you're limited by the number of inputs. Say, for example, you have several analog sensors you need to get back into your PLC. If you only have four analog inputs, you can only bring back four sensors. Now, why would you want to use absolute feedback? Well, it can increase efficiency. Uh, if you think of an old mechanical cam switch, uh, they had limit switches and all that information would go back to the PLC, but there were a lot of wear components on these types of sensors and getting that position back to your controller. By using an encoder, there are no contact points and making changes to the sensor and how that information is used in the PLC is easier than it is with something like a mechanical cam box. It can improve repeatability. In a linear application, if the only thing you have are limit switches, all I can tell you is if you're at the extreme end, one way or the other. 
If you have a multi-turn encoder on there, it can tell you where you are throughout that entire axis of travel, allowing you to do much better position control on that application. It can allow you to coordinate operation. If you're doing a coordinated XY type of control, having encoder feedback is essential to prevent things such as collisions or proper alignment of the application to occur. It can also eliminate homing cycles. Because when I lose power, if I have a multi-turn sensor on, say, a linear axis, I don't need to go back to a start point, such as a home switch, every time I cycle power. All I need to do is read my encoder position, I know where I am, and restart my application. There are many applications where absolute encoders can be used, as well as many markets and industries. Uh, there's packaging, uh, often used on labeling equipment or for machine timing. Uh, print and paper industry, things as registration control, or even location of printing heads and rollers. In the wood industry, uh, multi-turn encoders would be used for positioning saw blades and such for making accurate cutting. Uh, for metal forming in automotive, we often see encoders and resolvers and rotary feedback being used uh, for measuring things like shut height control or crankshaft position. Uh, at ports and cranes, uh, multi-turn encoders are often used for positioning the crane so we can unload and unload uh, equipment safely and quickly. Or material handling, where XY position is a must. This wraps up today's presentation. Uh, additional resources, if you have any other questions, you can contact me directly uh, at the phone number and extension below, or you can contact tech support at extension 123. Uh, at our website, we have uh, webinars and tutorials available, as well as brochures and other types of information available. Thank you for your time and look forward to speaking to you in the future. Thank you.